these gas fees, um, there was an update that increased the CD load. It was like a really stupid update for no reason that just basically goddamn 2.7x the cost to unstake a hex stake. And it, it's it's like, it's like these really it's like I, I sometimes just think and when I look at Ethereum, I'm like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like no one runs a business or a thing like this at all. Like if the only thing that the only logic, if I'm just thinking in terms of business sense of what's going on is basically they're they're trying not to create a fucking giant fork of their of their ecosystem. So they're fucking bribing the shit out of the, the, the Ethereum miners because they're rugging them in six months. And so they, they've been fucking like giving them like all kind they've been they've allowed these high gas fees to happen allowed them to earn a bunch of fees and everything like that and while also earning a bunch of emissions of the ethereum token in order to placate the fucking the, the ethereum miners which at the end of the day they're probably still going to end up forking and doing some other fucking chain just because they're fucking happy that they're losing their income but basically that's the that's the only explanation to this shit because they could have very easily have already upgraded it like eth like a long ago so it like it, it's just it's insane it's insanity to me like the shit, like, shit doesn't make sense I've it lost, does not make sense at all. I've, I've lost track. I haven't even been following what's going on with Ethereum. Like I do hold some Ethereum, but what's uh, yeah, like what's the deal with Ethereum right now? Like, are, is are they still? Wh when's the next release dates? When's okay. the next? Six months from now. Six months from now, there's something called the merge. Have they, have they moved? Have they moved the timeline, or has it always been six months from now? Like how how recently? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's been, it's been moving the timeline for a long time. No, I know, but like and more recently, like within. I guess, like, because there was talk last year about this. It's been talk for a while, right? Because they, they delivered on the burn aspect, right? So then yes. that happened, and then okay, now the merge, right? So so this merge, like, it's scheduled to take. Has that been moved recently within the yeah, last? Yeah, it, it was moved. It was post. It was supposed to happen like, in again? March. It was supposed to happen in March. It was supposed to happen already. Okay, so it, that was last year. So wow. basically, um, it's gonna ha it, it's supposed to happen in June or some shit, but I don't believe that. So I think it's gonna happen between quarter end of quarter two to middle of quarter three. That's when it's really gonna happen. Nobody wants a bear market more than uh, Ethereum. <laughs> they, so, want, but, they want they want to have more time to to roll their stuff out, right? Because right. you know during a bull market like these other layer ones, they're getting more adoption. They have way more stuff launching. They have way more reasons. So Ethereum wants a bear market, man. They want an extended bear market so they so, can they get more time. But yeah, when when are they actually going to have this merge? Do you think? Okay, the merge. I hundred percent the merge is going to happen this year. Okay. Right? Good. Okay, it's gonna, it's gonna 100% happen this year. So you think okay? Q, Q4 though, or Q3, or what do you? Like, three. It's, 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 for me personally, they're saying two, and I'm like, fuck. It. Okay, so yeah, I just add a bit. So like Q3 is realistically to think Q3, worst case scenario, maybe Q4. Well, worst case scenario, Four, yeah, that, that would be worst case scenario. The merge is gonna happen, right? That's good. The okay, reason, the, the, merge, the impact yeah. of that will be pretty big, right? Obviously, pretty, all, pretty big. I think that'll be a lot. I think that'll be the bottom sell pressure, though, right? There'll be sell pressure because you'll have all the unstake. They have a good amount of unstaking that'll happen. Right. But, but this, so this is going to be, I think this causes the actual, this will be like, okay. So usually the Bitcoin happening is the bottom more or less within a couple months afterwards. It's kind of like, it's the bottom of like a, of, of any of the bear market in a way. So you have the happening, you have, you have the Bitcoin happening. And then from there, it's a little bit, it's a little bit lagged out. And then you start getting price go up and then it takes the whole market up. But you know, me and you both know that the Bitcoin happening is not this year at all. So we don't have that. So this, I what, what I've been thinking for the longest, basically since like I would say like November of last year, is that the real bottom of this market, if, if like if we're still having, there's still gonna be a lot of the if you're deep in L ones or in hex, you're gonna be doing okay. But if you're just like the average market participant, the real bottom of this market of this little miniature like um, consolidating bull market is going to be the Ethereum merge because it's a triple halving to the supply. So whatever a halving does to a Bitcoin, it's three x more more potent on on ethereum versus versus bitcoin so because bitcoin even though even though there's a there, there's a happening every four years the inflation rate gets cut down in half but it bitcoin in a way is still inflationary but what happens when the merge happens on ethereum you have a triple happening you end up having um, a deflate like ethereum becomes a deflationary currency at that point deflationary yeah pretty so much you, will it become right away like pretty much right away like it does depend on the amount of uh uh, coins being well, I guess right away. It, well, as long as they can burn more coins than the issuance, like the issuance goes down a lot, right? Because the staking, I don't know, I can't remember exactly how much uh, it, it decreases, but it's a pretty significant decrease. What was the what was the comment there? 
so oh so i'm sorry so tweety bird said uh dcc when you mentioned 300 to 1000 percent apy on pulse chain yield farming Clancy's eyes turned wide open <laughs> he, he I, 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 I make it in my mission like it really like like Plancy be dodging me, man. I, I need it. Like I'm trying to like I've been trying to get him. I'm, in the I'm, a, I'm a hard sell. I'm a hard a sell. Long time, dude. Like Jesus Christ, I yeah. I got Robert Kiyosaki to hex faster than like. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, man. You got that's so cool that you uh, yeah got him in. But yeah. uh, there, there's a lot of people who are in hex that just don't talk about it. Like I've oh, onboarded, yeah, like, I've sure. onboarded some pretty big people into hex. I guarantee. They just don't, you they just don't, out, out of respect, I just don't talk about it. I w- I want if they allowed me to like, hey Miguel, it's okay, you can talk about. it. I would say these names and tell you guys like the people I've I've gotten into hex, but I I can't. But to keep you know everything kosher as well as like respect, yeah, unless they want to share the share. Yeah, unless yeah, I just don't put. It's like it's like me finding out. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait hold up. I, I was about to make a very stupid analogy. Wait, no, I'm not gonna do. That. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm stopping myself right there. Okay, so um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, just 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 to respect them as people and everything, and then they told because they trusted me and they told me, hey, Miguel, thanks for getting me in, but I just don't want to talk about it. That's fine. Hey, I'm just happy you're in. That's just it, you know. But just to go back to the whole Ethereum thing, what what's happening is this. Okay, so right now you can yield on Ethereum. Okay, you can yield on Ethereum, but you have to lock it up and you can't unlock it. That's the problem. What what the what happens with the merge is this. So. EIP-1559, there's a burn feature, which you know about. Cool. Except the burn isn't that big. It's just, it's it, it can be adjusted, but it's just, is what it is. We still have inflation. Cool. What happens with the merge is, is you can now, if you have 32 Ethereum, you, you can stake them yourself and you can start earning anywhere between a 4 to 6% yield. That's all it is, really. So with that, what, what the merge does is we go from proof of work, which is mining, to proof of stake. So what happens is the, the inflation that we're paying the miners goes away. So the burn the burn rate that we have right now on the transactions is enough to make the, the, the inflation that you get from staking irrelevant. So basically what it means is we're, we're essentially burning something like 8 9% a year, and we're only inflating 5% a year. So we, we're become 3% a year deflationary. So the, the the deflation rate of Ethereum starts going down, and then the um, the 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 people who control Ethereum and stuff are able to adjust the burn rate higher. So they can make the burn rate higher if they want to burn a ton of Ethereum. So they could take Ethereum from like 116 million down to like 100 million if they wanted to. So they yeah, can make it. No they problem. can they can burn a lot of Ethereum very quickly if they really wanted to. Yeah, it could get, it could go in that direction because they can adjust the, the like the aspects of it, right? So like right now, like just to, just to give people specific numbers, like the um. The issuance right now, at least that's what it says on the uh, ultrasound money. I'm not sure which site you use, but uh, it says 5.4 million is issued per year currently uh, ETH. And after the merge, it'll go down to 0.5. So yeah. if you're talking about, I mean, that's a basically an like 85% reduction or something yeah. like that in the issuance. when Triple when, happening. Triple yeah. happening. That's a huge. Imagine if like the U.S. economy overnight just like stops, you know, they, they print 85% less money or something or, or, or you or imagine <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Or just like another another production, like the high demand item is all of a sudden 85 percent less uh, per year or whatever. So it, it's a big deal uh, when the merge occurs. And then, you know, as long as they can get some level of demand staying within the Ethereum ecosystem, then you will have like a be deflationary because all they have to do is burn, you know, that small amount of issuance every year, or just point. Yeah, I mean that that five million now, or, or sorry, half a million uh, uh, new issued ETH right. every year. Now that that can adjust though, that can change because I think that's dependent on incentivized okay. staking, right? Doesn't that doesn't the, that the, infl- the inflation the inflation in terms of what you earn from proof of, from proof of stake from staking is is hard set. They can't change that. They can what a the only a the, the only thing Ethereum can change is the burn, how much they burn. But I thought I thought the burn was dependent on transaction the, acti- the activity within yes. the yes yeah. but it, if they choose to say hey um all because they have no miners they, they can choose to juice it up to like a hundred percent of the fees you pay for gas get burned yeah they can adjust that for sure like they they can so they they have a weird rudder it's almost like they're the Fed and they can control the the Fed's fund the Fed's burn rate yeah it is a little bit like that right there's you yeah. know they have their the the people that are heavily staked within their the ecosystem you know they'll have They'll have the ability. I'm not sure exactly how it all works, but they have the ability to adjust things, right? But, right. but um, 
Yeah, I, I think like it does depend though, because if there's not enough people staking in the ecosystem, like within uh, within Ethereum, like if there's not enough people staked, I thought that they would increase the uh, yield that they would offer for staking to incentivize more people. Right. Stake. It's sort of like it's sort of like hex. Like, look, hex hex has an inflation rate of three point six nine, right? Right. That's it. Stuck. Yeah. So if I'm if I'm the only person staking at that time, which is you, impossible. I you're, earn, a higher, you're in a higher peak. Like the pie might be the same size, but, but you're yeah, getting but the APY just shoots up. Exactly. Yeah, like your your individual piece of the pie is larger because there's less people, but the pie yeah. is always the same. Every year there's the same amount of like, you know, whatever. It depends on how many people wanna wanna get a slice, but this the pie always stays the same. So I think it might be the case with maybe maybe that's what it is with Ethereum. Maybe you're yeah, maybe they do issue uh, a half a million tokens a year, and that's their like same as hex is three point six nine or whatever. Uh, but depends on how many people are staked, like what percentage they actually get at right. the end of the day, something like that. I, I, I like to, I like to look in the specifics, but I, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I do hold ETH, and and uh, yeah, I mean, I I uh, want it to do well <laughs> for sure. I want I want to see it. I, this is going to be a huge. It, it's all about narratives, right? This is this is a pretty huge deal because finally you can just earn yield on Ethereum. Just like, sit there. So all right. So I will say one thing before I go into into like the numbers and why I think this is going to bottom the market for the overall for hexagons and stuff. And some of the guys deep in phantom, eh, whatever. Eh, we're, we're still gonna be fine. But like for the rest of the market who are like on like who are on you know it's it's morphine time, but they're on morphine uh, <laughs> in the in the hospital bed. This is going to be like the catalyst to like finally pop us out of this bullshit basically. And what it is is a triple happening. The first happening. Like, so the way I thought about it is like, so, so if it's three, so one happening is usually enough to pop the market within like three to four months out of the bear market or, or like we kind of bottomed or something. Right. So one, one sort of thing that I like with, with the hat triple happening is that Ethereum is two times less than Bitcoin in market cap. So two happenings, right. Would equal one BTC. And then that third one would be enough, like, just because it's the first time it's ever happened. So it's like, in a way, I just mathematically, when I think about it, if it's three happenings, then it actually could actually do, like would be strong enough to actually like pulse the market up in a way. So that's just on the math, just in the math sense in terms of like what's going on. The triple happening thing is enough to like it, and narrative wise as well as number wise to actually kind of like pump it up. So it's like it's almost like a one point five x Bitcoin happening. That only it, that's only happens. It, once. it is interesting, right? Because it is. Um... Yeah, I mean, you need you need like the way that crypto works is you just need like a really solid narrative that enough people can buy into to keep, you know, more and more people coming into the overall crypto space. Like it, you know, as long as something is doing extremely well, like as a sector, like say it's DeFi, you know, right. say alts are, alts are all doing well, say Bitcoin's, you know, having a, a really good run, like just talking historically in the past, like you, yeah. as long as like everything is is not dormant. So like yeah, if ETH if ETH has a reason to pump and there's you know strong uh, supply and demand dynamics, you know they they obviously have to upgrade other aspects of their ecosystem. But oh, correct. Yeah, the, the they, game, got, like, they, got, they got a lot. They got a lot of work to do, right? They still have a lot of problems. So they do. I mean, they still have they, have, they still have a level of adoption. They have you know developers working on there. The biggest thing for me about ETH is they've reached. For me, there's even yeah. The main reasons why I have a hold. I have a, uh, a bag of ETH. It's, yeah. it's just because they have network effects yep. and they have the interest from large capital. They're they're on the like be, they're the next option. They're they're also another another huge catalyst for ETH. Um, like this could be multiple years away. We don't know because they've delayed it for so long with Bitcoin. But yeah. I do believe like once Bitcoin gets a spot ETF, you'll see an ETH spot ETF probably like within a year of that. Oh, of course, so, yeah. And that's going to be huge. And like th th there's. There's very low chance that they give an ETF to anyone other than ETH after they do Bitcoin. Like I don't see them jumping to because ETH just there's the nothing else. There's nothing else that they'll do it for. There's you, absolutely you need, zero Cardano. You really, need, Cardano. Yeah. You need the Fancy you need, Cardano. You, yeah, you, would, you, would, you, you give a spot ETF to Cardano. I mean, like, not, I, I love Cardano, but Cardano though. Yeah, they're not they're not going to give a spot ETF to to any other coins. Uh, you know, super soon until there's a lot of interest, right? Right. Um, from from the big money, but. Oh, yeah, like with ETH, I mean, it's, it also comes down to volume. Like you need a level of volume. I'm, I'm hearing a little bit of echoing. Oh, okay. So, I mean, it was fine. It was fine for a while there, but there wasn't. It wasn't uh, no issues for uh, the rest of the stream. But, but yeah. Anyways, that's basically the point with that. Is just like, you know, you need. Um, yeah, I mean, you need a level of of 
demand and and volume, legitimate volume and and demand from big money before you have these spot ETFs and, and also a track record. Like ETH has been around for longer than these other projects. Like, you know, at the, like yeah. So I, I do think ETH gets that ETF after Bitcoin and that's gonna be pretty significant for for like like continuous demand. Because people that want to set up like in crypto, what are they gonna do? Okay, like they know nothing about crypto in a couple of years, they wanna get in and there's a there's only option is to get a ETF for Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're the they're the largest market caps. They're considered the lowest risks. They're consistently up. You know, on average, they don't have as big a drawdowns as these other cryptos that move create more extreme. They they have the regulation like nailed down. They're already been designated as commodities, right? They already have all the regulation in place. Way more like normie money is gonna just buy those ETFs. Like it's just so. so like, 